So here on FTD Facts, it's been quite a while since we've talked about a different country. And although we've been focusing on other content, we return to stand behind our message by spreading positive vibes and knowledge of other great countries and cultures. Today, we explore a country that we have not looked at in the past. A unique country that might surprise you when I tell you it is one of the highest income countries filled with rich culture and history. Today, we look at the country of Czechia, or the Czech Republic. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to FTD Facts. I hope you are all having a beautiful day, and today is a beautiful day because we are going to step in and learn about a great place that might not be home to us. For some of you viewers out there, it might already be home and you just want to learn more about your great country. Now, just to let you guys know, this is the kind of stuff that we do do on the channel. So if you're interested in learning about new things and new places, you want to hit that subscribe button and you want to check out our cool playlists because I've got a lot of ones that I've done for you guys and tailored specifically to you. So let's just jump right into the facts and probably the biggest one that we got to ask when it comes to starting off with some of the basics, is it Czechia or the Czech Republic? Very good question. Now, the reason that is a good question is because this has been a rather disputed term for the last couple of years. And it was only until 2017 that the debate was over and the Czech Republic became its official name. And I think one of the major reasons why this became a really hard term was because they didn't really have a way for the English people to pronounce their country. And as a matter of fact, in history, it was once called Czechoslovakia, which it's no longer called that anymore. And with that, we're going to return to the name, but let's take a look at when this country was formed. And this was all the way back in 1918. Before this, the country was part of what was known as the Kingdom of Bohemia, or as the English called them, the Czech Kingdom. But the thing is, people have been living in this area for a long time now. First of all, they state that people have been around the area which is now the Czech Republic since the Paleolithic era. And as a matter of fact, one of the most interesting things that they found within the Czech Republic is the Venus of Dolny Vestenis. This is actually the oldest known ceramic object found to date in the entire world. And basically, it's a statue of a naked lady that dates back to anywhere between 25,000 BC to 29,000 BC. And to add to this, it was around the 3rd century BC that there was the boy people who inhabited the region. Now, these were small tribes, and they were pretty much the reason why the area was called Bohemia. However, in today's world, the country of the Czech Republic is made up of many different people from different places around the world. As a matter of fact, 64.4% of the people within the country identify as Czechs, whereas 5% classify as Mordovians, 1.4% are Slovaks. But interesting enough, and this is kind of uncommon for other countries, about 25% of the people within the country have listed unspecified, so they really don't know. Keep in mind, this was also based off of an estimate from 2016. And with that, while we're on the talks of people, we might as well talk about population. The current population of the Czech Republic comes in at approximately 10,610,947 people as of a 2016 estimate. The last official census, however, was done in 2011. And within all these people, the official language is Czech. Keep in mind, however, because it is somewhat classified as a Slavic language, it is heavily related to its sister language known as Slovak. And as a matter of fact, one unique thing about this country is it actually has about 14 officially recognized languages. Insane. Most of these are Slavic by tongue, however, you also have German. Ironically enough, though, English is just not on this list. I mean, I feel bad. Probably everybody watching it does not know what I'm saying because there's no English there. <sighs> that being said, one very unique thing about this country is that the government recognizes Vietnamese as an officially recognized language, and no other country does that on an official level. This is due to the fact that there are several long-term communities that have stayed in the country, and they make up a big chunk, actually 12% of the entire foreign population. And also, when it comes to languages, did you know that according to the U.S. Foreign Institute, it says that Czech is the second hardest language to learn in the entire world? 
I didn't I didn't see that coming. One thing though that had me by surprise and it probably will have a lot of other people who watch this video by surprise is although you think of Czech as a Slavic kind of language with heavy German influence, you might think that they use the Russian alphabet. They don't. It's quite common to assume that they would use the Cyrillic alphabet, however they actually do have their own. This is because some of the letters that are within this language aren't even in Cyrillic. It's just its own thing. Interesting enough, when I mention German, you also got to remember the Czech have something very in common with the Germans, and that is their taste and love for beer. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, it's been reported that the people within the Czech Republic actually are the highest amount of beer consumption individuals per capita in the entire world. And also, speaking of Germany, you might think to yourself, oh yeah, they gotta have the biggest, best, and oldest breweries. Well, they might, but let's be real, the Czech Republic has one that's really old as well. Within the country, there is a thing called the Brevnov Monastery, which was the first brewery within the country, dating back to 933 AD. This was a monastery that was founded by Bishop St. Albert, and I just think it's kind of weird that, you know, I guess maybe, you know, bishops really drank back in the day. Maybe, I don't, I don't really know. I just don't like to think of a holy man getting drunk all the time, but I guess they did. One unfortunate thing about the Brevnov Monastery is that it was originally destroyed during the Hussite Wars, but however, it was rebuilt in 1720. As well, when it comes to German influences, that's another thing. They really, really, really love Christmas there. As a matter of fact, they got some of the biggest Christmas markets in the entire world. And if you ever get the opportunity to visit the Czech Republic, you have to visit and see the largest Christmas market in the entire country. And that is the one within Prague which opens at the end of November and usually goes till the first week of January, being open for approximately four weeks. Considering we're talking about Prague, let's look at it. Not only is it the capital of the entire country, but it's also the fourth largest city in the entire EU. The city itself was founded way back in the 7th century, and today there is still a huge castle within it. As a matter of fact, it is so big, this castle, that it is the largest ancient castle in the entire world. Known simply as the Prague Castle, it has a size of over 750,000 square feet. And how old is it? Well, the masonry dates back to 885 AD. And it's so popular that it gets at least 1.8 million visitors a year. Oh yeah, and you know what? In response to the whole castle size, I forgot to mention the land size of the Czech Republic. In today's world, the country comes in at 78,866 kilometers square, with the largest mountain within the country being Mount Schneska, coming in at a total size of 5,259 feet. It's a pretty cool mountain, actually. On top of that, there's not only a chapel, but there's also a weather station and a cool observatory. The chapel known as the St. Lawrence Chapel has been on that mountain since 1681, and started construction in 1665. The weather station was installed in 1974, and interesting, half of the mountain is owned by the Czech Republic, and the other half is owned by Poland. And a lot of people visit that place, it's really quite a busy little spot. Now, while I'm on the topic of land, here's one interesting fact that blew me even away. Now, most of you will probably sit there and think to yourself, well, the Czech Republic, it's a landlocked country, it's surrounded by other countries, you know, it probably doesn't have anything it owns outside of its own individual borders. Meaning like there's probably not an island or something like that that it owns. Well, you would actually be wrong. To further cement their relationship with Germany, within the Hamburg port, within the country of Germany, they own the Molduhafen port, which was originally leased by Czechoslovakia from Germany in 1929 for approximately 99 years. Now, this was all due to some of the effects of the Treaty of Versailles. And yes, it doesn't really mean that this port is a foreign state, but it is a thing that the government owns. But not only that, there's also a second spot within the Hamburg port that they own called Selahafen, and one outside the port called Putehafen. I did say that they have this owned for 99 years. As a matter of fact, in 2028, the lease is going to be coming up. Germany has some interest to take it back, but also the Czech Republic is like, now we want to continue this cool little arrangement. 
So there you go, guys. That is it. That is me looking at the Czech Republic. What are your thoughts on this? And you know what? If I missed some really cool facts, be sure to put it down there because, by the way, we generally do or I generally do part twos to my countries because you can't fit all these great facts about these countries in one little video. Ten minutes is long enough, guys. I'm not going to lie. But other than that, if you guys like this video, hit that like button, give it a big thumbs up. Be sure to check out our other cool playlists, which I've tailored to some of the stuff that I think you might be interested in. They're down there in the description box below at the end of this video and up there in the cards. But I'm Dave Waffle. Thanks for hanging out and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Okay, so you guys made it to the end of the FTD Facts video. Well, here's those playlists that I was telling you about. Be sure to check them out. Pretty awesome stuff, and I hope you guys have yourself a fantastic day. Don't forget to leave a comment for me or a suggestion for a future FTD Facts video because I love hearing from you. Okay, later.